Megan Hudson and I'm a Homeworks Consultant representing BJU Press Homeschool. Today I'm going to show you inside of the Parent-Led Textbook Kit for Pre-Algebra, the third edition books. We're going to take a look inside of the Teacher Edition and the Student Textbook. We will also look at the Activities book and the Activities Answer Key. And then we will look at the Assessment Packet and the Assessment Answer Key. So join me as we take a look inside of these books. This is the Pre-Algebra Teacher Edition book. This is the book that I will come to to find the lessons so that I can teach my child the information they need for the day. This book starts out with a table of contents to give an overview of the entire year of Pre-Algebra. You might notice that this page shows color, blue and red font, and this color is grayed out. That's because this book is actually split into two parts. So we're currently looking at part one, which is going to be all these brightly colored pages. And then part two will have the grayed out section for this book. So that is the difference for those colors here. This also gives me a list of the features for this book. So these features are just different ways that we show how math is used in real life. These pages are mixed into the student textbook as well. So throughout the year, students will be learning about how math is used in technology, or they'll have some application questions and problems to work through. There's even a few STEM projects they can look at. And then there's some different inventions and mind over math things that they might also be interested in learning about. And these are all sprinkled throughout the entire student textbook. There's lots of good information to flip through and read through before you begin this course, but I'm gonna jump ahead to this page. So throughout this book, you might see a link for teachertoolsonline.com, Homeschool Hub, or the After School Help. Teacher Tools Online is something that is used by classroom teachers. They purchase a license to be able to get access to that for their school. But we as homeschool parents have access to these different resources as well. We're just gonna be using the homeschoolhub.com. We also have access to the After School Help, which is gonna provide different modulars for extra practice on different topics throughout this course. And we'll talk more about these in a few minutes. And this is all information you will wanna read before you start teaching this course. This book also has some highlights for what you're looking at within each lesson. And we're gonna talk about that in a second as we go through an example lesson. And then we get started in here on the first chapter. I'm gonna preview a lesson from chapter two for you. So each chapter is going to start with a lesson plan overview. On these pages, I can get a quick check to see which pages are gonna be assigned for my student book, what my objectives are for each day, I'm also going to see printed resources or materials I might need, or if I need any digital resources. I also have a list of assessments or assignments that I would be assigning throughout each lesson. Each chapter does end with a section here called Application Problems. These are pages that your student would do to help incorporate real life type problems. And then we also end each chapter with a chapter review. So that will review all the different topics from the specific chapter to review for the test, which is usually assigned the next day. Just as a quick reminder, if it does say teacher tools online, as a homeschool parent, we are going to the homeschool hub to find these resources. So if you logged in to the homeschool hub and you looked for this game, Math or D, this is actually going to be on the homeschool hub and it's gonna be listed in your course resources. And this is going to be a way that you could review math for your test the next day. Math or D is just a silly way of saying Jeopardy with math questions. This chapter also ends with one of our four STEM projects. So we'll be taking a look at that at the end of the chapter. Now you might notice that these two pages are actually the student textbook pages. They are just a reduced student textbook page that is in your teacher edition book. Any of the information on the sides is just information for you as you're helping present the information in the student textbook. So each chapter will start out with a page like this with your entire chapter objectives and a quick overview of what your chapter will be about. Let's go ahead and get into our first lesson. So this is section 2.1 
And I see my essential question here along with my objectives for the day. I also have a note here for what I need as a printed resource and the digital resource for the day. I do have some notes on the side that I can incorporate as I'm teaching this lesson, but I would mostly be focusing on the student page. I would be going through this information with my child to make sure that they understand what they're learning about for the day. And then we would start working through examples. If I see a circle like this with a number in it, I know that that will have some information for me on the side and the teacher margin. I will continue through the entire lesson, making sure that my child understands each of these different parts of it. And on this particular page, I do notice that I have a QR code. This is for the after school help webpage. So this QR code is going to take me directly to a modular that's on the after school help page that will be specific to this lesson. This one will take me to a couple examples that will be similar in style to these problems right here. So we can watch that quick little video and make sure we're understanding what we're doing. I see here that I've now reached the exercises. This is the part where I am assigning work to my child for them to complete. So this is going to be in the apply section in my margin. Now you might notice that I have three different assignments I could give, a minimum assignment, a standard assignment, or extended assignment. I can pick the one that's appropriate for my child to be able to complete for this lesson. You might also notice that throughout each of these pages, I had all this red font to show answers for each of these questions. On the assignments, I actually have extended solutions for me as the teacher to help make sure that we are doing our work correctly as we're solving the problems. And I would highly encourage you to get a separate sheet of notebook paper to show your work when you're solving these problems. So that way you can check not only your child's answer, but also to make sure that they are doing the work correctly as they're solving their problems. And then at the end of the lesson, I do have a quick cumulative review to review what we have done in previous lessons. Now this particular lesson also ended with an invention. So this is gonna be one of those real life applications of how math can be used in the real world and why it applies to daily life. We're gonna jump ahead a little bit now. So this page is called Gyroscopes Then and Now. This is gonna show us a little blurb about gyroscopes and see how they used to be used and then compare it to how we're using it now. So this actually ties in with that invention page from a few pages ago. This is one of those application pages. Remember I mentioned that earlier, each chapter will end with application problems. So this is set up very similar with your objectives, your engage and instruct. Here's the student information, and then they would be applying it to do some work. And then you've got your solutions here on the side to check to make sure they're working their problems out correctly. And then here is the chapter two review. The first page of the review shows the key concepts. It also lists the different section numbers from where these concepts come from. So if there was a concept that they didn't remember how to do, they would know where to go back and review. They also have a vocabulary section up here. Same thing, it has the section number listed, so if they needed to go back and look up a word, they know where to go. And then you have some problems to work through to make sure you are ready for your test. And then the day after the test, we do have the STEM project for this chapter. We have an objective. We have a note here saying we need to get this printed resource, and we also need this digital resource. Remember the things that we need to print or have digital resources for, are listed for us on the Homeschool Hub. At the back of this teacher edition book, we do have some selected answers and they are listed for every chapter. We also have a glossary and we also have an index. And that wraps up our teacher edition part one Part two is going to look very similar. It's just gonna be the second half of all the lessons. So you're able to take one book and put it away until you're ready for it, and then swap books halfway through the year. So this is the student textbook for pre-algebra. 
And this is the book that your student will go to to be able to see their lesson for the day, get the explanation for it that you're going to go over with them, and then have their assignment assigned from it. This book does start with the table of contents and then the list of the features for all those real life topics that are interspersed throughout the book. It also gives some information about how to use this book. So this would be good for your child to read through before they begin this course. And then it jumps into the chapters. I'm gonna hop ahead to chapter two. This is what we were looking at in the teacher edition book. So let's see what it looks like within the student book. This is lesson 2.1. So I see here that I have some objectives for what I'm going to be accomplishing in this lesson. I also have my instruction listed here with some examples, and I'm gonna continue those examples going through the entire lesson. I also see that after school help QR code that I can scan to get that quick little video module. I also see some vocabulary words that I should know by the end of this lesson. And then I've got my exercises for practicing at the end of the day. I do also have my cumulative review to review what we've done so far in this book. And then here's my invention blurb at the end of the day. So it looks exactly like those smaller pages that we saw in the teacher edition. It just doesn't have any of the extra information that you had in the margins of your teacher edition. Let's go ahead and flip through to see what the rest of this chapter would look like. You're probably noticing that there's quite a few QR codes mixed throughout this book. So there are several different video lessons that you could watch the short clips of to make sure you truly understand the concept for that particular type of assignment or example. Here are those application problems and my chapter review. My STEM project. I'm gonna hop ahead now to the back. This book does have selected answers in the back of it. It is for the odd answers only, except for the skill checks that are mixed as part of your instruction. So the skill check answers for all the odds and evens are in the back of the student textbook so they can check their answers as they're working through those skill checks to make sure they're understanding it. But when you get to the actual exercises for the day, you only have answers for the odd questions. The student book also has the glossary and it also has the index at the end of the book. It also has a quick reference with some of the common formulas you'll see throughout math. And then the last page will be symbols that you might see throughout this book as well. So this is the student textbook. This is the activities book. This is a second book for the student, but this is a workbook style book that can be written in. So when would I need an activity page? Thinking back to the beginning of our video, when we were talking about the teacher edition book, remember how I mentioned that each chapter would have a lesson plan overview? And then there was this column that was listed as printed resources and materials. Many of these activities are found in this activity book. So let's flip through and see what chapter two has. We start out with some math and scripture and then some calculator skills. We also have some extra practice on the distributive property an algebraic proof, some problem solving, scientific notation, mental arithmetic, and then additional chapter two review. We also have a cumulative review to go over everything from the end of this chapter and review things that have been previously done in previous chapters. 
Also remember how I mentioned that the materials you would need for that STEM project when we were looking at the student textbook were on the hub. So the hub will have your digital resources, but the printed instructions and your material lists are gonna be found in this activities book. So this is going to be your potato power project. There's the instructions and your planning and your designing and your testing. And then you'll have some calculations to do. And there's even a rubric provided for grading at the end. And then it jumps into chapter three. So this is the activities book for the student. To go along with the activities book, we also have the answer key. And as the name states, it is purely a answer key. So the answers that you need to go with the activity pages are listed in here. So this is the activity answer key. And the last parts we have for pre-algebra are the assessments and the answer key to the assessments. So all of your quizzes and your tests will be found in this assessment packet that you can tear it out as you need it, hand it to your child, they can work on their problems, and then you have the answer key in order to check their solutions. Thank you for joining me as we looked inside of the pre-algebra third edition books. If you have any questions about the materials you saw today, please feel free to reach out to your local homework by Precept Consultant. We would love to help you.